B is five-sided ring, okay? I told you the numbering is specific. It starts with one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This is how it is numbered. This is purine. Now, how is it synthesized? You see, purine nucleus, that means it forms these two compounds, adenine, guanine. And adenine and guanine, you know, these are, along with, these are the purines, along with the pyridine, cytosine, uracil, and thymine. They form the DNA and RNA. And the DNA and RNA forms new protein, new organism, new synthesis of new enzyme, etc. etc. So it is so essential. So that these two purines, they lead, they lead to the formation of DNA and RNA. And this leads to the formation of new proteins. Right? <clears throat> so, for the formation of new proteins, for the longevity and progression of life, etc., this purine nucleus has to be there. And also, pyrimidine nucleus. First of all, it's all about purine nucleus and the synthesis of purine. Now, in the synthesis, if this is the main nucleus, in a nutshell, I can tell you that this portion is formed by glycine. Glycine, it is an amino acid, right? Now, these two nitrogen groups over here, this one, these two are formed by glutamine. Glutamine, that is the second amino acid. And the third amino acid provides this nitrogen. This is aspartic acid. Aspartate. So there are three amino acids involved. Glycine, which forms this portion, 4, 5, and, and 7. Then you've got glutamine, 3 at, and 9 position. And then you've got aspartate at nitrogen position 1. So, three amino acids are involved. Alright? One is glycine. The other one is glutamine. And the other one is aspartate. Apart from this, what you are left with is this carbon this carbon compound uh, and this carbon. Now, this carbon is formed by formyl, formyl tetrahydrofolate. This carbon is provided by formyl tetrahydrofolate. And this one over here is provided by methenyl tetrahydrofolate. It was written in the literature like this. In some books it is written again for my tetrahydrofolate. This one or this one. So what are we left with? We are left with carbon at position number 6. This one is provided by respiratory carbon dioxide. So this is all these, this is how these are all provided. And you get the formation of purine. And from purine you get the formation of adenine and guanine. So adenine and guanine, these are the purines. 
this is how they are formed by mild variation. You've got an amino group over here, you've got adenine, you've got uh, amino group over here, you've got guanine. Now, <coughs> the thing is that these adenine and guanine combine with the pyrimidines, adenine with thymine and uh, guanine with cytosine. And I told you, if you take it like this, adenine combines with thymine, thymine, and guanosine combines with cytosine, right? Again, these are linked with hydrogen bonds. Adenine with thymine, two hydrogen bonds, and these contain three hydrogen bonds. So, but these are two chains. One is this chain, one is this chain. So, these two are linked together by hydrogen bonds. These are hydrogen bonds. Hydrogen bonds. This was about TN. But how are these linked together? A, G, similarly, you've got, supposing you've got C over here, supposing you've got T over here, so this is a long chain. How are they attached with each other? These are attached with each other by phosphate, phosphate diester bonds. They've got oxygen. So like like this. So, if you see the structure of DNA, you see that there are two coils, two strands coiled upon each other. So, this is how the coiling takes place. That one, each strand is linked by phosphodiester bonds. Phospho diester bond. To be very specific, 3 dash, 5 dash phospho diester bond. 3 dash, 5 dash phospho diester bond. This is how it's linked together. While these two are linked together by hydrogen bond. So this is a structure of DNA. And if you say about a structure of uh, This is DNA. About the structure of RNA, it's very simple. You've got a single strand, adenine. Then you've got guanine, for example. Then you've got cytosine. And then you've got, in fact, I would improve it. This A is AMP, adenosine monophosphate. This is guanosine monophosphate. These are the mononucleotides that are attached together. This is cytidine monophosphate and this is thymidine monophosphate. But over here, you, if it is the structure of RNA, would it be double, bond, double stranded? No. It is RNA is single stranded. And the linkage is like this. You have got U, UMP. In fact, it is AMP, adenosine monophosphate, guanosine monophosphate, cytidine monophosphate, and uridine monophosphate. And again, they are linked together by phosphodiester bonds. So some students had some uh, difficult culty in understanding that. And I tell you again, it is done with phosphodiester bonds. So this is how they are attached together. Now, <coughs> synthesis. The synthesis takes place by a compound called as PRPP. Phosphoribosyl pyrophosphate. For example, you have got this 
ribose nucleus this is ribose you got this is numbering and then you've got phosphoribose pyrophosphate you've got a pyrophosphate over here so it is phosphoribose pyrophosphate this one is linked to then you've got glutamine then you've got attachment of glycine so there are so many compounds which are attached and it progresses out of many steps to the formation of IMP. I am just giving you an outline first of all. So enosine monophosphate. Enosine monophosphate will be then converted into either adenosine monophosphate or guanosine monophosphate so this is the plan it starts with PRPP and you get the formation of AMP and GMP like this over here you have got AMP this is in fact AMP and this is in fact GMP, right? And similarly, it is cytidine, CMP, TMP, thymidine, monophosphate. So these are all phosphates, mononucleotides. These are all mononucleotides. And when they are mononucleotides, they are attached with phosphodiester bonds, forming one strand. And then these two strands are attached to each other by hydrogen bonds and then they are present in a spiral formation. Now, <coughs> this is the outline for the formation of purines. <coughs> now, if I know something about clinical, I will talk about uh, synthesis in detail later on, but this is an outward plan that for the formation of DNA, for the formation of any organism you have got bases and the important base over here is these are the is adenine and guanine and adenine and guanine they have got one thing in common and that is that is purine nucleus this is the purine nucleus it got two rings a and b okay this is six sided this is five sided How, it is numbered like this one two three four five six seven eight nine this is how it is numbered you have got nitrogen atoms over here, over here, over here, and over here, right? And this over here it forms AMP like this. For example, just a brief idea. This is that ring, and you've got nitrogen over here, over here, over here, and then you the attachment of ribose over here. And then you have the attachment of phosphate over here. So, what is this? This is adenine, adenine, and this is the ribose, ribose. So, adenine plus ribose forms adenosine. So they form adenosine and there is one phosphate group so it is adenosine monophosphate or you can write it as AMP the same thing over here AMP this is AMP adenosine monophosphate 
simply this is adenosine monophosphate you've got an NH2 over here you've got double bonds over here, here, here so this is adenosine monophosphate similarly GNP etc etc so all these are linked together and they form this thing it starts with PRPP and over, over on top of this glycine glutamine the whole rings are being made I'll talk to this is an outline okay now if you want there are certain conditions you would like to stop the growth of DNA when would you like to stop the growth of DNA when DNA is being formed in excess and in what conditions DNA is formed in excess the DNA is formed in excess when there is growth malignancy and the tumor is formed so in tumor there is excess of DNA so you would like to block it how would you like to block it that is the clinical point okay you would you could block it at different steps for for example if you have got a compound called as mycophenolic acid myco this is an anti cancer drug mycophenolic acid this attacks and blocks what it blocks IMP dehydrogenase IMP dehydrogenase is blocked and so GMP is not being formed so when GMP is not formed so the strand is not formed and so the cell does not multiply so in certain tumor it's blocked like this so the drug is mycophenolic acid this is the clinical part I have given you the outline and the clinical part I will give you the synthesis, synthesis detail later on secondly so one was mycophenolic acid second is you have got a drug called as azathioprine Aza Thioprene. Students, are you listening to me? Can you hear me? Yes? No? None of you is speaking. Can you hear me? I'm not screen share. I'm not going to 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 share. But I'm not going to share. नहीं स्क्रीन नहीं नजर आ रही कि मैं नहीं नजर आ रहा नहीं स्क्रीन नजर आ रही है नहीं आ रही ओ अजीब सी बात है इन्होंने तो दो तो तीन दिन कैमरे लगाए हुए सो दे आर नॉट डूइंग दे जो देखो मैं इतना वो कर रहा हूँ फायदा क्या हुआ तो एनीवे ये मैं रिकॉर्ड भी हो रहा है लेक्चर ठीक है आप उसमें स चले मैंने स्टार्ट किया है प्यूरिन का सिंथेसिस मैंने आपको बताया कि पी आर पी पी के स्टार्टिंग कंपाउंड फिर इसका एक मिडिल कंपाउंड आई एम पी आता है और फिर ए एम पी और जी एम पी आता है ठीक है इन योर बुक्स इट इज गिवन वेरी अप्रोप्रिएटली ठीक है फिर मैंने आपको बताया इसके आउटलाइन और फिर मैंने बताया कि इसके अंदर क्लिनिकल ड्रग्स कहाँ कहाँ लगती हैं ठीक है एंड टॉकिंग अबाउट क्लिनिकल पॉइंट नॉट आई डू इट इन डिटेल Subsequently, so one I have told you about mycophenolic acid. ठीक है? Mycophenolic acid क्या करता है? IMP dehydrogenase, inosine monophosphate dehydrogenase को inhibit करता है. Then you have got azathioprine. Azathioprine is another anti-cancer drug, right? It activates to six mercaptopurine. Six mercapto Purine. This one is converted into TIMP. This compound TIMP. TIMP stands for thio inosine thio inosine monophosphate thio inosine mono phosphate 
वो स्टूडेंट्स पूछे क्या कह रहे हो कहते ना स्क्रीन नजर आ रही है ना आप नजर आ रही है ये तो कमाल हो गया फिर मुझे ये तो वो तो वो तो स्टूडेंट वो तो मेरे को कहीं जी इनका लेक्चर नहीं मैं समझ आता आप बिल्कुल कैजुअल ले रहे हैं आपको मैंने कहा पंद्रह बीस मिनट बैठ जाए करें आप देखा करो मैं इतने मुझे, मुझे और भी काम होते हैं मैं कॉल सेंटर के काम कर रहा होता हूँ मुझे एक चीज नहीं है मेरी तो फिर ये कौन करेगा तो आपके लिए आता हूँ यहाँ पे मैं कैमरा लगा लेता हूँ आपके नहीं तो फिर ये कौन करेगा हमारे देखिए एक्टिविटी ये होती है कि आपको एक चीज सेट करके फिर दे देते हैं स्टूडेंट्स क्या कह रहे हैं हेलो पूछे इसको बोल तो रहे हो क्या प्रॉब्लम आ रही है हेलो अब देखे ना वो स्टूडेंट्स कह रहे हैं तो फिर वो सो वी हैव गॉट एंटी कैंसर ड्रग व्हाट वन इज माइकोफिनोलिक एसिड पूछे क्या नहीं आ रही उनको बात तो आ रही माइकोफिनोलिक एसिड लेकिन ये मेरी रिकॉर्डिंग उस पर हो रही है इस पर हो रही है उस पर सही हो रही है राइट तो माइकोफिनोलिक एसिड स्टॉप्स इनिबिट्स आई एम पी डी हाइड्रोजन इज द अदर कैंसर कैंसर ड्रग्स आर एंटी कैंसर ड्रग्स आर एजोथाइप्रीन सिक्स मार कैप्टोप्योरिन एजोथाइप्रीन इज कन्वर्टेड टू सिक्स मार कैप्टोप्योरिन and six mar captopurin is converted to thioinosine monophosphate thioinosine monophosphate has got the ability that it blocks this reaction formation of gmp by inhibiting imp dehydrogenase and also tiamp blocks this one that is adenosine apart from that you have got two other drugs one is called methotrexate methotrexate and then you have got sulfonylamide sulfonylamide competitively inhibits pabpa this one competitively inhibits para amino benzoic acid hence folic acid not formed and methotrexate competitively methotrexate methotrexate inhibits the enzyme dihydrofolate reductase hence when this one is inhibited so tetrahydrofolate is not formed and when tetrahydrofolate is not formed one carbon metabolism no no one carbon metabolism and when there is no one carbon metabolism again purine is not formed so all of these anti cancer drugs they act by inhibiting the formation of purine nucleus and when the purine nucleus is not formed how can you form adenine or guanine and when the adenine and guanine are not formed how can 
A and P and G and P be formed, and when they are not formed, then we cannot get the formation of DNA. And if there is no DNA, how there will no will not be any mitosis or meiosis or division of the cell. So these are anti-cancer cell uh, drugs, but they act at different stages. These are all anti-cancer drugs. I repeat again, mycophenolic acid inhibits IMP dehydrogenase. Then you've got anti-cancer drug azathioprine. Azathioprine is converted to six mercaptopurines. This one is transformed to TIMP. TIMP stands for thioenosine monophosphate. And these drugs, they have got the ability to prevent the formation of GMP by blocking IMP dehydrogenase. And they can also block, TIMP can also block the formation of AMP by inhibiting the enzyme adenylosuccinate synthase. So this is how this thing is blocked. Also, you've got cancer drugs, methotrexate. Methotrexate would inhibit dihydrofolate reductase. That is, active folate is not being formed. Active folate. Tetrahydrofolate is not being formed. And when it is not being formed, it will be unable to carry one carbon metabolism. And when there will be no one carbon metabolism, again purine will not be formed. Similarly, you have got uh, uh, sulfonylamide. This one competitively inhibits PABA. And when PABA is not there, in the, the, this, this is in fact antibacterial activity. So PABA is not there, so no folic acid being synthesized in the microorganism. Again, this is antibacterial activity. But methotrexate is antimycotic, antimycotic. Uh, it is anti-cancerous. You say that these are also anti-cancer drugs. So this is how the main point of attack is that purine will not be formed, and when purine will not be formed, AMP, GMP will not be formed, and when AMP, GMP is not formed. DNA and RNA is not formed and the cell division stops. So these are anti-cancer drugs. Next time I will talk about all this in detail in my next lecture.